In my many years of doing this health and longevity YouTube gig, there's one thing that has become clear about our pretty cool meat suit and its optimal function. And it could basically be broken down into this short and stolen soliloquy. Mo inflammation, mo problems. Good news is we've got a new study that sheds some light on why what and when you eat may be one of your best tools to avoid and mitigate this internal chaos. And I'll just say, you're likely going to be surprised about the masked biological hero coming to the rescue. Yo, yo, yo. What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftinbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are exploring yet a another reason why strategic eating and meal timing may be a secret to a more functional self. And we're doing this by focusing on its modulation of longevity liability numero uno, chronic inflammation. Because let's be honest, we live in a 24 seven, all waking day eating, ultra processed world. A world where the majority of us intelligent walking apes find ourselves consuming energy from the minutes we get up to the minutes before we go to bed. Essentially eating energy dense, nutrient scarce foods on repeat. And as a result, stirring up a metabolic storm of dysfunction within that we don't even know is happening. And when we combine this with all the other suboptimal societal norms that have been standardized on in this modern day, including a ultra sedentary lifestyle, chronic sleep deprivation, and a constantly accumulating nature deficit, it kind of makes sense that we're getting chronically sicker, sadder, and going madder as technology makes life more comfortable at a faster pace than ever. And whoa, I know, that was, that was a lot. And apologies for this kind of unplanned intro rant here, but I'm trying to get the point across. The point and connection that all of these modern lifestyle habits that I just rattled off happen to be the ingredients stirring up and formulating the abundance of inflammation that accrues within our body. Because inflammation is simply our natural reaction to cellular dysfunction. The immune system trying to clean up the cellular mess and prevent bigger problems. However, when this siege of lifestyle habits is chronic or consistent, which it often is, it's the main precursor for mo problems. One of those problems being meta inflammation or chronic inflammation closely linked and or primarily derived by metabolic processes. You know, all those processes we need for second to second life, like cellular respiration, or when our mitochondria turns glucose and fatty acids into the energy of life, ATP. Yeah, those, little important. This metabolically induced dysfunction has been noted in a growing body of literature to be a potential driver of various chronic diseases, including type two diabetes, fatty liver and cardiovascular disease, obesity, and autoimmune conditions, dramatically impairing one's health span along the way or those healthy years of life we focus on extending around these parts. Now, you may be wondering, okay, then what is the best way to fight this debilitating chaos within? Well, the best thing that you can possibly do is prevent it. Bringing us to one of the ways we may be able to do just that. Enter strategic meal timing, also often referred to as intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. This is the art of dividing your 24-hour day into a designated feeding and fasting time. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly if you've been around this channel, there seems to be a plethora of benefits from following a strategy like this for a period of time. One of the least talked about being its noticeable effects on pro-inflammatory pathways throughout the body, and in particular, its uncanny ability to silence them. Reducing these signals that arouse the immune system and putting the body in a more optimal spot for cellular function, and thus, you function. That being said, the exact how and why strategic meal timing has this effect is still somewhat a mystery. Gotta love biology, which made this new study. Looking into the inflammatory pathways that fasting may modulate, super interesting. 
Let's take a look. Here, a team of researchers from the University of Cambridge sought to understand the link between fasting and inflammation a little better. To do this, they focused in on a pathway called the NLRP3 inflammasome, which is a protein complex inside cells that plays a critical role in the immune system's inflammatory response. A complex, might I add, that the traditional high-fat, high-sugar Western diet is notorious in activating. Here, they collected blood samples from 21 volunteers who followed a prescriptive yet simple fasting regimen a 500 calorie meal followed by 24 hours of fasting and then another 500 calorie meal to identify key changes within the metabolome that could be driving fasting's anti-inflammatory effects. And during this exploration, they stumbled upon an unlikely hero, a lipid known as arachidonic acid. This fatty acid, which has been previously identified as a precursor for both an inflammatory and anti-inflammatory response, dramatically rose when participants fasted and dropped upon refeeding. Hmm, interesting. So researchers doing their research thing dug a little deeper and looked at arachidonic acid's effects on immune cells cultured in the lab, finding that it surprisingly turns down the activity of the NLRP3 inflammasome. You don't say. Wait a sec. So you're saying a potential alleviator of our inflammatory woes may just be a molecule that society loves to demonize? A fatty acid? Irony is fun, isn't it? Now, let me remind you that this is just a glimpse into one of the multitudes of pathways involved in the inflammatory response. And much more research is needed to really sort this thing out. However, it also provides a glimpse into the pure power lifestyle wields, displaying how a single bout of strategic meal timing may alter our cellular and metabolic self, making the idea of adding some structure into daily eating even more compelling. So if you're interested in exploring, here are some key things to consider when crafting your very own strategy. Number one being prevention, prevention, prevention. Did I mention prevention? Ooh, just rhymed. Remember way back in the beginning when I mentioned that the best way to fend off this longevity liability of inflammation was preventing it? from ever happening in the first place? Well, that's still the number one goal. And although the inflammatory response can be seduced by many different internal and external factors, one of the biggest and most manageable is the food that we willingly shove down our pie hole each and every day. Side note, does anyone know why it's called a pie hole? Production team, look that up. We know from a growing body of evidence that an ultra-processed, energy-dense, nutrient-scarce way of eating is straight-up inflammatory fuel. Fuel that feeds, ever so chaotically, the fires of chronic inflammation directly through an overload of glucose, fructose, fat, and additives galore, driving mitochondria dysfunction and the accumulation of inflammatory fat tissue, aka visceral fat, but also indirectly through its negative modulation of the microbiome and its ensuing siege on the gut wall and other bodily barriers. So, beginning the process of phasing out the ultra-processed garbage and standardizing on real whole nutrient-rich foods may very well be the most important thing that we can all do to manage and mitigate inflammation. Which brings us to the less important stuff like strategic meal timing. Although this strategy may even be more beneficial for people who haven't improved their eating habits yet, simply because there's much more room for metabolic improvement. Anyway, after years of reviewing and testing many different protocols, all of which you can see in the 70 plus videos across the Fasting 101 playlist, the strategy that I find both most optimal and most doable is one I like to call circadian eating, which is essentially time-restricted feeding, but strategically positioned during the day. 
This is when you aim to consume all of your energy within a 10 hour or less feeding window positioned during the daylight hours. Ideally positioning your bigger meals a little earlier and finishing your last meal and all energy consumption about three hours before bed. Enjoying a 14-ish hour fast through the night until the ceremonial breaking of the fast the next day. Or breakfast. Break fast, breakfast. Yeah, that is indeed why they call it that. This strategy is crafted on the notion that we humans are metabolically optimized from an evolutionary perspective to digest and metabolize our energy during the day. Not waiting till 8 p.m. or right before we roll into bed to stuff our face. A topic we cover in depth in this video here. And interestingly, when we look at some of the preliminary studies, there have been a number of which that have shown beneficial shifts in inflammatory markers when comparing early eating to traditional later time-restricted eating. That being said, some structure, whether it be earlier focused or later focused, seems to be much better than no structure at all. So observe thyself, document your unique variables at play, and map out the best window and or strategy for you. If that happens to not include circadian eating or time-restricted eating, that's cool too. As mentioned before, there are many ways to manage the inflammatory flame within. The truly important thing is that you start deploying the art of doing today, because this inflammatory storm oh too often moves in silence until the cellular and metabolic damage becomes evident. So best get ahead of it and extinguish this unnecessary inflammatory flame with the most powerful tool you have, lifestyle. Because remember, Mo inflammation, mo problems.